Hi. Um, so I'm Dr. McHugh. I am currently the co-clerkship director at UT Southwestern in Dallas, Texas. Um, you might ask why I'm qualified to uh, talk about this topic, and because I've written a couple personal statements. I've reviewed and edited a lot of personal statements for my job, and I've read, at this point, a lot of personal statement, but also it's because I like science and I want to help people. Because I know that's <laughs> why all of you are in this room today, right? Four years ago, and maybe some of you, like three or two years ago, you wrote an essay about how you like science and you wanted to help people. And that's how you got here, right? OK, yeah, so that's why we got here. So it, it's funny because it's true, right? Because why do people want to become doctors? It's because they kind of found themselves like, well, I want to help people. And I like science, so this makes sense, right? And I'm going to use my crystal ball. You guys are here at this emergency medicine conference. And so thinking about it, I'm going to say, all of you, so far you've liked all of your rotations. <laughs> but especially that making the diagnosis part, right? And creating that differential diagnosis. And everybody here, you want to help all people regardless of their insurance status, right? And of course, multitasking. Everybody here is really good at multitasking, right? And that's why you're going to be emergency medicine doctors. So in the same way of that commonality of like you like science and you like helping people, the personal statement for emergency medicine, there end up being some themes, OK? And that's because, again, the kind of person who likes our specialty, there's some themes there, and that's okay. And what's kind of mentioned earlier in terms of that, the short blip on the personal statement is sort of like, yeah, for a lot of you, your personal statements are gonna say kind of like this. Okay, I like my personal statement. And that's an okay personal statement. And the general, especially depending on the overall, your overall application, that's gonna be fine. And you're gonna get an emergency medicine every single you're here and you're gonna get, I'm giving you a little bit extra because maybe I can give you a little bit of push to make it a little bit better. And here's where the thing to remember is it's the only free form part of your application, okay? So it's the only place that you can kind of do whatever you want with it. I mean, you could make a haiku. And there would be one person who would be like, you know what, that is ballsy. <laughs> and I'm interviewing this person, okay? Now there'd be a lot of people who'd be like, wow, that, this person doesn't know how to like follow some directions and like who edited this and that sort of thing. And so I don't recommend that, right? But like you could do that if you want. So it's your only really free form. So it's really, you know, you have to think about it a little bit differently. If you are a creative writer, you've already published in some creative writing journals, then like you have a process. Like good for you. That's not most of us, okay? Again, we like science, we like helping people, we like writing essays. No, 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 that's, I didn't put that in my essay because that's not who I am, right? So you have to kind of think about like, how much time is this gonna take me? How much do I struggle with writing, right? Line up some people who you can, get, can re read that essay for you and that's gonna be a range, right? Like if your aunt is a high school English teacher, like awesome, having her be one of those people is really good, okay? And you know, an emergency medicine advisor, hey, when can you read my essay and then give yourself some dates. So it's really nice to also like give yourself, like, if I tell them I'm gonna get them my essay by this day, then I know I have to write my essay by that day, okay? So kind of start thinking about that process. The next really important part of your process is actually to work on your CV. So maybe you've already made, updated your CV, maybe you haven't, but wherever you are in that process, this is a huge area when you're working on your CV what are the things on your CV or the thing on your CV that you want to just expand upon? Like, oh, but I did so much more and it just looks on this one line and it's just one line on my CV and that's not enough, right? Like, I want to tell them more about this. Like, yes, put that, okay, yes, that's maybe what I should write my personal statement about because it's just not coming across. Maybe it's something that you like trying to fit on your CV, right? Like, I am the best big brother to five small siblings. And like, that was something that defined my childhood and I'm so good at it. But like, there's not really a line for that on your CV, right? Like, how do you put that in there? I don't think I can put that in there as a high school job, but like, that's I, what I did. I babysat my side, you know, like, so there's ways, think, think of things like that that you want to put on your CV because you know it's part of what defines you. 
and it's just not there. These are items that are so rich for the personal statement, okay? So you're gonna take those things, and then you have to think of sort of about the narrative. So this is sort of part of that writing process. So I think about those things, and then I think sort of about why I'm kind of interested in emergency medicine. This is four things that tend to be sort of emergency medicine-like words. These are not the only four narratives or themes by any stretch of the imagination, okay? Um, and if it was a bigger audience, I'd be nervous that people were gonna get mad at me this year because everyone just wrote about being, you know, having great advice. But these are some four things. So, and the idea is, again, the workshop sort of, so teamwork. You know, I did all this teamwork stuff and I was actually a college athlete and all this stuff. I wasn't, just to be clear, but <laughs> you were, okay. So, and I found in the ER, like, they really work in teams and, like, that's really cool. And, okay, I think I can kind of make this make sense, all right? So, we're, everyone's looking for a resilient person, okay? That's a kind of a characteristic we know is good to have in a resident and is a good influence on our co-residents. So if you have a narrative, if you have a story that sort of makes sense from that resilient, you're like, I'm just a resilient person and I think I can sort of make sense of how to tie this together. That's how you make an essay that's like worth reading. So you kind of come up with what makes sense for your item on your CV and how you might be able to tie that together with why you like emergency medicine. So you have your narrative. And so you're gonna take that, this is your opportunity, right? I wanna use this personal statement, it's the only place I can be expressive. Take it my opportunity to give a narrative, to put some kind of information on myself, to say, hey, I want this person to kind of be like, this guy's cool, and I wanna meet them on interview day, right? So there's three kinds of narrative that I think fit most people, okay? There's the showcase, there's the explain, and sort of the see into the future narrative, okay? So most of you, the showcase, okay? These are my jazz hands emoji. <coughs> sure, it means other things in other places. Please don't overinterpret, <laughs> right? It's the jazz hands, right? Like, I am gonna show off. So this is the item on your CV. So maybe you were the founder of something. And like, really, anyone on your CV, you were like, ah, oh, the founder. Well, so no, tell me. Like, I saw this problem, and this was the problem, and this is how I came across it, and I decided like I could do something about this. So I founded this organization, and this is what we did, and this is what we've accomplished so far, and this is what we're gonna do next. And like, wow, we've got problems at my institution, and this person, someone who knows how to see problems and things like that, right? Again, like, I was an athlete, and like, God, I could put this in this one line, but oh my gosh. So, and I had these injuries, and I had this, I, and I, this is how I overcame things, and this is how I have a process for how I got better at things, and things like that. Okay, wow, that's how you become a good doctor, too. And this is where that showcase, so that non-traditional thing, and, you know, something you've had to overcome, something that's been resilient. And there's a couple caveats to that. So one of them is sort of, you know, again, that resilience, someone who's been through something, like, we admire that. We know that one, it's a way we relate to our patients. Patients, if, they, if they're in the emergency department, they've had something go wrong with their day, right? And then two, residency is hard. So if you've dealt with things and we're emphasizing diversity, but the, the, one of the caveats is this, is how comfortable are you talking about it, okay? So if this is something that gets you out of bed in the morning, but it's also really kind of personal, then be careful. And some of the, that's where like an advisor or a person is, how am I saying? Can I talk about this without kind of getting overwhelmed? Now there's two approaches there. Sometimes it may still be something I have to put it out there. It's important. I, I can't avoid it. Fine, but then practice, practice, practice talking about it. Your personal statement is gonna be a lot of times a thing the person reads, they'll maybe take a glass of your CV and read your personal statement before they interview you. So they're gonna bring it up. So don't think I can convey this information and then I won't have to talk about it later. Now, maybe it's something so deep and personal that people won't know how to bring it up. Um, and if it's that, talk to me, because I had one of those and it was interesting. Um, so you can still prep for that. So, but otherwise, you can, like, just you have to practice, you have to decide. And then the other component of that is sort of the things that are sort of your choice to share. Now, I will tell you this. If you talk to probably anyone who's showing up at this conference today, these are the questions we can't ask you during the interview, okay? And you talk to anyone who's kind of showing up, these program directors, and they say, no, share that with me. And it'll help you, one, it probably would be good to know if you kind of are sharing this physical disability and the program is uninterested, like, well, that's probably not gonna be a good fit, right? 
But most programmers are going to know this would be a good opportunity for me to figure out how you're a good match. And again, if you frame it in that narrative of resilience and all those sorts of things. The caveat on this is the laws exist, right? So this isn't an emergency medicine thing or even an ERIS thing of why we're not supposed to talk about these in interviews. These are federal laws. Because traditionally, some of these factors have been things that have kept people out of the workforce, right? That people have used against them. So it is something that is a kind of a thought process, right? And having that, that's where like that individual mentorship is like, is this something, is this a risk? And again, residency is, is it, more complex than a job, it's a family, they'll tell you all these things, but it's also a job, right? And again, that's where the federal system is. So this is important, that knowing that by disclosing this information in your personal statement, you are sort of giving that information that someone could use to discriminate like to them, right? But again, you'll get advice, like yeah, share it with me and this is, we're gonna work with you, but it is a measured decision, okay? So the please explain. So this is hard. This is if you have something, something went wrong, right? And it's gonna, it's in your application and it's gonna come across. Now, sometimes you have to ask your deans and things like that, like, is this definitely in my application? Does this come across, okay? And then the other point is then, what narrative do I have? How can I turn this and spin this into resilience? Because again, you're gonna make a mistake in residency probably at some point too. Almost everyone does. Right? If you didn't, you probably didn't need to go to residency in the first place, right? Like this, it's an area sort of to make mistakes. And so if I'm someone who's learned from mistakes, if I know how I've done that, that might be an advantage for a program, right? So, but the point is sort of, is it definitely in my application? You know, there's really no need to like, oh, when I was five, I did do this thing. And I'm just gonna be really honest with you, right? Like not necessary, but if it's in your application, and then how does it fit in sort of with the narrative? So if you're just not a great test taker, I think there's probably a way to spin that and, and kind of talk about it. But on the other hand, if it's sort of consistent, but you have really other skills, like emphasize those other skills, right? But if you're one test, you have this one test that really kind of was an outlier and it was the day after your grandmother's funeral and you thought you could still take it, but that was probably wasn't a good idea, then yeah, maybe this is that opportunity, okay? This is where it's really important though too, and this is where having the advisors lined up is really important, and someone's in your dean's office and your EM advisor. If you have something to explain and you don't take responsibility for whatever element of it was your fault, and sometimes it really is like the testing center was closed and then this and then that, and I, then I, but if there's no element of it that you sort of take like, and this is how I would have done it differently, or this is how, then you're, then you're missing an opportunity, right? Then you're really like, and I'm just drawing more attention to it, but I'm actually just deflecting, and everything's everyone else's fault, and that's a problem. Because you, again, you will probably make a mistake during residency, and you've actually just shown me that when I come to you with like, hey, this happened, you're gonna go, oh, nope, that was everyone else's fault, right? So the opportunity to explain is really important for people who need it, but it really is sort of a crucial, I'm gonna take some responsibility, I'm gonna fit this in my narrative, and I'm going to show you how I'm a mature person who can respond. So the see into the future is like sort of for that very specific person, okay, who has sort of like really good life plans. Now I'll tell you, can you ad lib? Like, yes, can you sort of, I'm gonna, now if you're like, I'm gonna have changed emergency medicine in five years, <laughs> okay, but like you better have some interesting things to say, right? But like, can you, am, am I gonna find you in five years? and be like, hey, uh, you told me in that personal statement that you were gonna, no, no one's gonna find you. So you can be creative here. But again, this is what people are gonna read about you before they interview you. So kind of think something you have some commitment to, right? Tie it into something I have commitment to and this is why I think I'm gonna be really good at doing this. And if it changes, just remember, again, what's in, remember we talked a lot about like remembering what's in your essay and stuff like that, if you maybe, Today, you just did your ultrasound rotation, you're like, this is my eye, it all fits together. And then in between here and now, you do another rotation, you're like, oh wait, now it fits right adjacent, and that's okay, but just when that comes up on interview day, like, inter ultrasound, did I like ultrasound? You know, so you have to just be like ready. But again, you can paint a picture, and especially for people who like, they came to medical school to do emergency medicine, because like, this is like, that's your essay, that's a highlight. So those are sort of three different ways of thinking about the personal statement that I think are really kind of key, of like how you can maximize. A couple sort of 
something to think about, try not to do. So remember your audience. You, the people reading this are emergency medicine doctors. You can tell me a story about this shift you had in the emergency department. Is it going to be that much more impressive than shifts I've had in the emergency like, I've done a lot of shifts in the emergency department, right? I know how crazy it is. I know how cool it is. Like, and, and this is kind of comes back into I like medicine, I want to help people. We read a lot of essays that are like, and down in the emergency department, everyone was yelling and it was so cool. Like, yeah, yeah, we know that's what happens in the emergency department. We work there, right? So use it to frame. So instead, tell me, hey, you know, when I did this, like when I was a Boy Scout and we did this, and everyone was yelling, and I loved that. And then this was the place where, again, it was the same. I felt at home, right? Like, just tie, make sure it's your narrative of why the emergency department was good for you, why that was a fit. And again, expound on how you are good at X, Y, Z, not just like ER is really cool, right? If you have a cool narrative story about your life and you can like write it really cool and it's a little dramatic, like awesome, that's really fun for us to have this like, ooh, on a dark and stormy night, right? Like, I love those personal statements, but again, if it's really just like this really graphic narrative of your shift in the ER, then like, okay, yeah, I did that too, right? Like, so just caution. We read a lot of those, right? Okay, some people are really good storytellers. And some people are really intentional with their lives. And actually, like everything they've ever done was to become an emergency medicine resident in UC Southwestern in Dallas. Right? So you can please, again, I'm going to read your CV right before or right after I read your personal statement. So if you're just repeating everything you've done, OK, yeah, that's just like, and, and some people do that. And again, they try and tie it. Okay, and then I did this, and then they like, expound on a couple things you've done. But you don't have to repeat everything in your CV, because we will look at your CV, too. This goes back to the personal, personal statement, and you guys have heard a little bit, right? So, and preference signaling comes into this, right, and wasn't kind of here before, but can you write personal, personal statements? If it's based on having read my website, or, again, you just like take each, open each file and put in UT Southwestern at, you, as, at a program such as yours, so one of my favorite things. As a program such as yours, huh? Like you, that would apply to anyone reading this essay at any program, right? So, so make sure that it's, if you ha this is a way to, again, if there's one or two places that you're like, actually this place is special, I've worked with that person, I have this narrative and it fits so in, like sure, you can do that. And it does provide you an opportunity to do that. But it's a lot of work if you're applying to a lot of programs. And then the other caveat, again, so if it's just copying, it's, I don't really know anything special about this program, but I, I think I should do personalized. It's, you're just creating extra work for yourself, and it's probably going to come across to me that you actually have just copied and pasted the website, right? So not necessary. And then the other thing is, if you are not super careful on Eris about uploading, the number one way I know, right, Wrong yeah. personal statement or bad at geography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something has gone here. The beach is where I'm happiest. I will be miserable for three years in your program. I don't think that's what they're trying to tell me, right? So, like, there, something's gotten confused. So you just have to be really careful because, again, if I'm looking at a and it's, if it's sometimes you ask this app, it's so good. I know that they probably really want to go to Ohio State, the coolest place to do residency, but. Uh, maybe I still want to interview them anyway. But again, if, if I'm looking at a bunch and it's like this error, it's like, ah, they're not that attentive to detail. It's not such a good idea. So yes, a personal personal statement can give you a leg up, can make someone be like, ooh, there's a, they've got a good reason to want to be here. I'm going to take an extra special look at their application, but it's risky. So you know, why am I qualified to come here and talk to you guys? I've read a lot of personal statements. I had to write a messy one, and it's, You, it, this is a hard thing because for a lot of people, it's like, I don't have this big hardship. I don't have this t total clear 10 year plan. I don't have anything to explain. I, I didn't, don't have, you know, so what do I just, at the very least, keep it short, edit, keep it to that, you know, one page, 
don't make, don't make someone turn the page, especially your last sentence was so good, but there are some people who will just read one page. Uh, and proofread, 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 because that's just a great way to say, and I'm a little bit sloppy, right? And again, emergency medicine. We know you're good at multitasking, uh, but if you were multitasking, you know, your, your, your Instagram while you were writing your essay and that comes across in the proofreading, then are you gonna be able to like proofread your notes in my emergency department and how are you gonna do that? I don't know. Okay. What question do you guys have? You know, I think if you can, again, create a narrative that says, I have, this is all I've done, this is where I'm from, I have this vision, like, wow, I, by training this resident, I might actually affect care in another country that really needs it, right? At the right program with the right narrative and that sort of thing, like, that's going to be powerful if that's my mission as a program, right? So I think that's where, again, that personal, personal statement does come in. And that, again, a little bit careful, where if you have a vision for a certain, that fits in like a certain academic program, and there's a handful of programs, then you might wanna have a personal statement, right, that says that. And, but then it's like, well, at this community program in X place, like no one does that, no one's ever, then that personal statement, they might be like, well, this person, I don't know that they want to train here. We're, we were just clearly on their list because they have this life vision that we're not the best place to train at, right? So I think that's where being very specific. So I think that, yeah, absolutely, if you can tell a story that, again, backs up, like, this is where I'm going, and that makes me want to meet you to be like, can I train this person to do what they want to do? Then that's great. Totally, and I think that's where it's like sort of like, that's just like kind of, no, I don't think, no, you don't at all. And in fact, that's a little bit of like, yeah, don't harp too much, don't like, there's an explanation here, but like, yep, yeah, it was this, and it was this, and knowing, again, you can talk to your deans about how might this be framed in my dean's letter, that, that's an important conversation to have, because the narratives matching up is super important, right? If, you're, if your deans phrase it in one way, and then you phrase it a kind of different way, like, just make me feel comfortable to say, yeah, stuff happens, right? Like people have lives, people have things, and, and that's, but okay, but yeah, no, but it's taken care of, or this person's grown from it, or and I don't expect this to be, right? Like it doesn't need to be a full confessional, right? That's the other thing is sort of like, okay, it matches up, and then, you, you know. Like yes, yes, yeah, exactly. Like, and then even just like, but this is something I learned from it. This is how I'm gonna be a better advocate for my patients. This is, again, like ties together. Yeah, you do not have to dwell. It's just sort of making it. So yeah, it can showcase and explain, and that's great. I think just kind of then you may have to think extra hard about the narrative, okay, how can I? And you know, it's too strong of a spin. Yeah, you just gotta say, yeah, this happened. And, but bringing it up, making sure it matches, and then again, how you're more resilient, you're more, of what, what, what people expect from that. That's great. Thank you.